In this episode of Travelog, we'll slow down our pace as we have a taste of a local's life, stop by one of the 10 islands to explore before you die, visit a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Penang, and get up close with some interesting creatures. In the first episode of our Malaysia special, we went from historic Malacca to the new administrative hub Putrajaya to Kuala Lumpur. We'll now continue our journey to Pangkor Island, Penang and Langkawi. Welcome back to Travelog. We're still in Malaysia and as we head up north along the Straits of Malacca, we'll slow down our pace in coastal towns and learn the ways of an islander. You ready to take a chill pill with me? Let's go! Get ready! Malaysians, a passionate and unbelievably friendly bunch. Malaysia is one of the most visited countries in the world with increasing number of tourists. It has a long coastline grace with beautiful beaches and it is known for its excellent hospitality. It's really hard not to fall in love with this place. We're now in Lumut, a coastal town just a three-hour drive from Kuala Lumpur. It has no motorized water sports or party nights. The pace here is so slow, about the most energetic thing you can do is venture over to islands nearby for some snorkeling. This is a great place to experience a Malay way of life and the perfect hideaway. We're now in a little jetty in Lumut waiting for our boat to head to that island called Pangkor Island. It takes about 20-30 minutes to get there by boat. We're actually heading to that island um, because they are known for producing dried fish and we're going to check out a fish factory over there. If you've been to Malaysia's east coast, you'll notice the difference in sea colour. Here in the west, the seawater's green and in the east, it's blue. My guess is that there are more algae in the west as the seawater here is warmer and calmer. And that's just what algae love. I have no idea what to do with this thing. It's soft, it's spongy. Actually, I think we could eat this, right? Right now, fresh. <laughs> okay. Pangkor is still relatively unknown to the general public. These small and hilly islands close to Lumut are covered with nature reserves and definitely worth the visit. This little island is called Pangkor Laut and it is the late opera singer Pavarotti's favourite hideout. They even have a room named after him. Largely inhabited by fishermen who live in fishing settlements along the coast, Pangkor is in complete contrast with the hustle and bustle of the city. It's laid back and perfect for experiencing an authentic Malay way of life. 
One of the main commercial activities in Pangkor is the production of salted and dried seafood, particularly satay fish, a kind of dried fish biscuit. For anyone who's ever wondered how satay fish and fish crackers are made, a visit to one of the fish factories is a must. There are only two of these kinds of fish factories here on Pangkor Island, which are open to public. And this is the place where they fish, process and package everything and export it to many countries, mainly Indonesia and China. And due to the fact that it's situated right by the sea, everything here is uber fresh. I'm definitely going to bring some back to Beijing. Coastal towns along the Straits of Malacca are considered very strategic and safe from the monsoon winds, as the area is geographically protected by the Indonesian island of Sumatra in the west. And the fact that the state of Perak, where Pangkor is situated in, used to be rich in tin, made it even more attractive to foreigners, notably the Portuguese, Dutch and British, whom, in that sequence, colonised Malaya from the early 16th century up till 1957. Where are you from? Uh, England. Ah, okay, some sunshine over here for yeah, you. Yeah, it's nice, really yeah. nice. And what are your plans for the next few days? How long are you going to be in Malaysia? Uh, we're in Malaysia for quite a while, but um, we're on Pangkor for about four or five days, just four to five relaxing. Days. Yeah. Very nice, four to five days is quite a substantial time. Where are you heading after? Um, we're heading to Kuala Lumpur. And how do you like it so far over here? Yeah, it's lovely. Really, really nice. Looking forward to exploring the island more. So. Ah, okay, that's great. Have you tried the local food here yet? Not yet. We can't oh, yeah, not yeah. really. No, we're going to try some tonight, I think. Yeah, the seafood here is a must. Expect to find many halal eateries on Panko Island, as most villagers here are Muslims. But for tourists, the most important thing to know is that here, seafood is king. Coming up next, we will head to one of the 10 islands to explore before you die. Take a walk in the Living Museum and have a taste of a local's life. From Lumut, it takes about 3 hours to get to Penang, listed by Yahoo Travel as one of the 10 islands to explore before you die. Besides, its capital Georgetown is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. With all these accolades, how could we miss Penang? Penang used to be known as the Prince of Wales Island when the British took over the island in 1786. It used to be a swampy, thick forest and to clear the land quick, British Captain Francis Light loaded the guns of his ship with silver dollars and fired it into the jungle to encourage speedy clearing of the island. And in order to entice traders and settlers to the port, Francis Light introduced Penang as a duty-free port whereby people are allowed to claim as much land as they could clear. Don't you wish you were born then? We'd all be millionaires by now. Penang, like Malacca, is very rich in cultural heritage. It was the next booming port for trade after Malacca. And when there's trade, there's a multitude of people who come together from all around the globe to seek their fortune. And this, this is the home of one of them who made it big. His name is uh, Chong Fatsi. He's a Chinese businessman, also known as the Rockefeller of the East. Like many other Chinese fortune seekers in the 1800s, 16-year-old Chong Fatsi boarded the boat to the Southeast Asian region known as Nanyang, or the Land of Opportunity. This penniless teenager who hailed from Guangdong province ended up as an entrepreneur involved in many lucrative ventures. One of them being the Zhang Yu Winery, which he founded in Shandong province, China's oldest winery. The Chinese form nearly half of Penang's population. In Chinese culture, the importance of family and regional origin is such that a person's ancestral home plays an important role in their social identity. And this gives rise to clan associations. 
This is one of the more famous clan houses for families with the surname Ku. Back in the day, these associations would assist new immigrants with integrating into Malayan society by providing leads to jobs and housing. These days, the role of clan houses is more as a guardian of Chinese culture. So clan is the best in this all of Southeast Asia. This building is rich in architecture and heritage. It's an excellent example of heritage conservation and restoration, and its craftsmanship is unrivaled anywhere in Malaysia. Nighttime is chow time in Penang. Some of the best places for food are situated in the most inconvenient of places, so you might want to ask the locals for recommendations. But this promenade by the sea has all the popular local fare in one place. Welcome to Gurney Drive in Georgetown. Look at the choices we've got. Being in Penang, seafood's a must, and this is a specialty. It's oyster fried in eggs. It's oily, but it's just divine. Penang's famous for its hawker fair, so forget about dining indoors if you're here for a short time. Head out, sweat it out, and sample the myriad of local food. Being the state with the highest density of Chinese speakers in Malaysia, the Chinese influence in Penang is very apparent. So much so, you can find people of different races communicating in Hokkien, a Chinese dialect from Fujian province. When the Chinese first arrived, they didn't have money to buy land, so they built their own houses on stilts over the water. These closely knit families with the same surname would live together on the same jetty. And this place, the clan jetties, is one of the few communal sites that's still intact, surviving the threat of urbanization. Mm. 
，所以希望我们还是我们自己的心做的。Obtaining UNESCO World Heritage status saved these jetties from plant demolition. In fact, it feels like I'm walking through a living museum. If you're interested, the locals even offer homestays so you can sit back, relax, and allow the waves to lull you to sleep. After a night of noise and chaos, it's just nice to take a leisurely stroll. And what better place to do that than in the clan jetties, next to the Penang Ferry Terminal. These jetties were established in the mid-19th century when there was an influx of Chinese migrants who came from China's Fujian province. And each jetty is occupied by people of the same surname, as that made them feel more at home, since they are living so far away from home. With the little time that we have left, we decided to make a quick stopover at the other side of the town. I'm right now standing in an Indian temple, and behind me, that's the Temple of Paradise. It's the largest Buddhist temple in Southeast Asia. And not far from this area, you can find a church and also a mosque. I think this really represents Malaysia's multiculture. And I really wish we had more time, but we've got a flight to catch to our next destination, Langkawi. The distance between Penang and Langkawi is a mere 190 kilometers. Hence, a flight will get you there in the blink of an eye, just under 30 minutes. Another way you can get there is by ferry, which takes about 2 hours and 45 minutes. Flying off the northwestern coast of the Malay Peninsula, where the Straits of Malacca meet the Andaman Sea, Langkawi Island is the largest of an archipelago of 99 islands. The area was once a sanctuary for pirates who moved from one of the many islands with their lush jungle to another, without being detected. Thankfully, the pirates have now been replaced by tourists. Due to Langkawi's proximity to Thailand, the Thai language can be understood on the island. Moreover, Langkawi for a brief period used to be under the control of the Siamese. Hence, the Thai influence can still be seen in the architecture, culture and food on Langkawi Island. Next, we'll get up close with some interesting creatures, learn what saved Langkawi from the devastating 2004 tsunami, and try not to burn a hole in our pockets. Langkawi is a land of legends. It is where fact and fiction meet. Almost every town and feature on Langkawi Island has an intriguing story behind it. From giants and heroic warriors to doomed princesses. Not forgetting a little romance. The two highest mountains on the island, one of which we're heading up to now, are named after two giants, Mat Raya and Mat Chin Chang. The story goes that their two children were to be married, but at a wedding feast, a fight broke out when a groom was caught flirting with another woman. Pots and pans were thrown, a pot of gravy broke, and the place where the gravy was spilled is now a town called Kwa, which means gravy. And where the crockery was broken is a village named Belanga Pecha. Yep, it means broken crockery.
Remember I mentioned that when you're on the second highest peak of Langkawi, you could actually see two other countries? Well, to our north is the southern part of Thailand, and to the west over there behind the tower is Sumatra, Indonesia. Well, I actually have my passport with me right now, so I'm actually considering taking a 40-minute boat ride to Thailand. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Where are you guys from? Egypt. Ah, uh, Egypt. How long have you been here? Almost three days. Three days in Langkawi. What, how do you find the people and the food here? Very kind. People are very, very kind. Have a yeah, wonderful stay in Langkawi. Enjoy the view of yeah. Thailand and yeah. Indonesia. Everything's here. <laughs> Alright, have fun. Bye. <laughs> We'll now get to Kwa. That's where the two giants purportedly spilled gravy. More prosaically, Kwa serves as a ferry hub and is also notorious for burning a hole in your wallet. This is a shopper's haven. <laughs> Apart from its beautiful beaches and scenery, Langkawi is also known for one other thing. So much so that many tourists actually come with their bags half empty or empty. That's because Langkawi is known as a duty-free island where most of its imported items are very much cheaper. Pair that with Langkawi's beautiful scenery, it's no wonder its annual number of tourists is at 3 million. Ooh, chocolates. Look at the amount of people shopping. Not only do they come with their bags half empty or empty, they actually need to buy new bags. Shopping aside, Langkawi was given World Geopark status by UNESCO in 2007 due to its unique geological features and its plans for conservation, ecotourism and sustainable development. Thanks to its well-preserved mangrove forests, the coastal communities here were saved from the devastating tsunami in 2004. Mangroves may not look like much, but they play a crucial role in our ecosystem, especially in coastal areas where they serve as a buffer between land and sea. By soaking up excess moisture in the air, they prevent major storms and flooding. The mangrove forests are also home to a variety of life forms. You might even spot a dolphin if you're lucky. <laughs> Are they to be released and then for fishing or? Oh, okay, they're for eating. No. Yes, this one only for show. That's the name of his pet stingray, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the need very soft. <laughs> no, no teeth. Eh. They're just uh, sucking. Wow, is it dangerous? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can we see that there? Yeah. Wow, this looks prehistoric. Yeah, right. It's a mouth here. Oh, okay. So wait, will mm. it bite? No bite. How, how would you cook this? Like, this okay, one, wait, wait. Uh, is this your pet? Yeah. So we can't eat this? Yeah. Normally <laughs> we eating from the beach area. This uh. from mangrove. Okay, yeah, so there's a but difference we, in taste as well? Uh, different. Uh, eating not from the mangrove, but from mangrove, no many eggs. Uh, okay, We're right. eating only the eggs around okay. here. So what's this fella's name? <laughs> no name, this one. No name, so it's not your pet? <laughs> Can I buy it to eat? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you farming for like restaurants or just like... Continuing with our tour of the mangroves, there are still a few friends I'd like you to meet. So I've got some chicken fat and chicken skin in here and I'll show you what it's for in a bit. The eagle is the symbol of Langkawi. In fact, Langkawi's name is said to have originated from the abundance of eagles on the island. Lang is short for Helang, which means eagle, and Kawi means reddish-brown in the Old Malay language. So, Langkawi means reddish-brown eagle, something you can spot soaring in the skies of Langkawi pretty often. 
The best time for eagle feeding is in the morning or at noon when they're hungry, or after a rain shower. I must say, it does look rather dramatic seeing them swoop in on the food from the cliffs. If you have more time in Langkawi, I'd suggest you kayak through the mangrove forest. There's so much more that can be seen and captured. Perhaps some of you may have heard of the program Malaysia My Second Home, a program offered to foreign citizens from the world over to reside in Malaysia. And pairing Langkawi's duty-free status with its abundance of nature reserves, I won't be surprised that many foreigners would choose Langkawi as their second home. In our 10 days travelling north along the Straits of Malacca, not only did the entire team put on some weight from all the good food, We've also encountered many friendly locals who were ever so ready to open up and share their experiences. And I think the most beautiful result of Malaysian history is that everyone mingles and coexists so harmoniously with each other whilst maintaining their customs and religions. I think Malaysia is definitely an ideal place that will give all you culture vultures and foodies out there a big bang for your buck. I'm Kaylee Lam. I'll see you again on Travelog. We're now in Lumut, a coastal town just a three-hour drive from Kuala Lumpur. It has no motorized water sports or party nights. The pace here is so slow, about the most energetic thing you can do is venture over to islands nearby. For In the first episode of our Malaysia special, we went from historic Malacca to the new administrative hub Putrajaya to Kuala Lumpur. We'll now continue our journey to Pangkor Island, Penang and Langkawi. Welcome back to Travelog. We're still in Malaysia. Malaysia is one of the most visited countries in the world with increasing number of tourists. It has a long coastline grace with beautiful beaches and it is known for its excellent hospitality. It's really hard not to fall in love with this place. In this episode of Travelog, we'll slow down our pace as we have a taste of a local's life, stop by one of the 10 islands to explore before you die, visit a UNESCO World Heritage Site in Penang, and get up close with some interesting creatures. And as we head up north along the Straits of Malacca, we'll slow down our pace in coastal towns and learn the ways of an islander. You ready to take a chill pill with me? Let's go! Get ready! Malaysians, a passionate and unbelievably friendly bunch. Hi. 